Okay, I think we can probably get started here. So um, thanks everybody for joining today. Um, uh, <laughs> thanks for the comment in the chat. This is the telco version. Uh, so this is the, I guess, like second kickoff meeting, if we can say that, of the CNF working group. Um, uh, notes on top. Um, and the agenda for today, first I want to say thanks to anybody that's contributing to the discussion right now um, in the, the Slack channel. I think it's been like quite a lively discussion and I'd like to kind of address some of those points today um, in the uh, agenda. And so uh, quickly going over that, uh, we'll just do like a quick overview um, of what we're doing, um, talking about like how we think the, the group can work um, and then kind of addressing some of those discussion points um, that have been brought up in the uh, Slack channels, especially around like what is our audience and how do we incorporate them in, into what we're doing. So we're really focused on like the, the outcomes of this group. Uh, before we get started, is there anybody else that would like to add something to the agenda? Okay, um, hearing none, I, I think we can get started. Um, so, and also please feel free before any other meetings uh, to add things to the agenda um, whenever you want. And so the first thing that I'm gonna point out um, for those who weren't able to attend uh, the like official kickoff meeting at KubeCon, there's kind of like two different things you can do here. Uh, one is you can rewatch it on the CNCF YouTube and the second thing is we also put together um, a short overview deck of the working group. Now this will be a living document, it'll be updated, but the link will stay the same. So if you want to pass this off to other internal colleagues and chat about it um, or provide comments like on the deck, um, please feel free to do that and use that as the way to pitch it to other people that may be interested in the group. Uh, now I know a lot of people on the, on the call um, today weren't uh, or sorry, we're at the kickoff meeting in KubeCon, so I won't go through the overview deck uh, because it's uh, a lot of what we went over then. Um, so the current focus is on, is on the, the best practices and requirements for telecom targeted like um, cloud native workloads. And I guess the, the first thing that ties a little bit into uh, what we were talking about before is like what should this group um, kind of focus on in terms of the, the benefits of like CNFs. Uh, thank you, Victor, for um, creating like this first pull request in terms of um, the, the, the charter. And so I guess I wanna like maybe jump into the discussion here is uh, what do people um, think is, does anybody have any other ideas of like what should be included in the charter? Or did anybody not have a chance to create the polar cross that they wanted to? Uh, maybe one question, Vuk is speaking from Deutsche Telekom. Um, uh, does the group think uh, it would make sense to, uh, uh, to address a bit uh, the cloud native network function uh, architecture best or architectural best practices uh, from the cloud uh, uh, native uh, point of view uh, in our work. Because if we say just only conformance, um, uh, then we are uh, having a set of definitions uh, what to uh, test conformance against but we do not uh, give a prescription what would be maybe a better practice uh, for a cloud native uh, applications to, to be developed, architected or so on. So I guess uh, the, the idea uh, would be like uh, uh, blueprint or, or sort of uh, a reference architecture of uh, cloud native network functions might go beyond the scope, I, I know, but I'm just throwing it here for discussion. I think it's, this is Taylor, I think it's at least going to come up in discussions. I, so I would say 
it's not that we should avoid discussing infrastructure and, and the architecture and everything else. Um, it's gonna come up. So it would be, is, is it in scope um, at some point to actually try to test and talk about the best practices? That would be a little bit different. But I, I would say it's going to be talked about <clears throat> as we're talking about the applications running on the infrastructure at a minimum. Yeah, I guess if I, if I could jump in here too for a second. I, I know one thing that CNTT um, and I guess the new new kid under LF networking is talking about like building the like an actual like reference architecture uh, based on Kubernetes. So maybe could you tell how you see the group of the work that you're suggesting in this group as different from that effort? Because we, right, we don't want to like duplicate efforts here. Unless you see that there's something that they're missing. Hey, Bill. This is Andrew from Red Hat. Um, just, just a quick one. I guess on sort of conformance and reference architectures, I think you know one. One of the complexities of, of dealing with telco is that they have many, many constraints around, you know, how they produce architectures. And actually, as we think about the types of applications that will go from, you know, more traditional heavyweight into a sort of CNCF kind of environment, some of those restraints are going to come with them. Some of these applications do not naturally fit into this environment. Um, now, that doesn't mean they can't be adapted to do so. I think there are limitations for some of them. But, you know, I... I, I guess, just trying to choose my words carefully, um, is sort of strict reference architectures, I think are difficult to do when it comes down to telco. You know, the idea that, you know, without a specification, so I've used this example before, but you know, you take MEF for example, right? It's clear specifications uh, around protocols, you know, around interfaces, FIs, et cetera. Without specifications, reference architectures are rather hard. And you know, one of the wonderful things about Kubernetes is it's a framework rather than you know a true set of specifications. And I think it's difficult at that point to to get conformance against very strict reference architectures. I think you know things like being able to provide you know guidance. I think is very good. You know, in the sense of a group that has you know good skills, good knowledge, and a good goal around what's a good way of doing things from Kubernetes point of view. But I think that has to be taken in context with the application approach, because ultimately it's the applications here that we're really trying to support rather than just a Kubernetes platform. So there's just a couple of my thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and maybe I, I could address like the last part um, specifically, because I, I think this has been a point of confusion um, for like quite a few people in terms of conformance versus best practices. And this also came up um, in the conversation in, in the Slack uh, with the comments um, from Ian that right, cloud native isn't exactly like a thing. It's, it's, not, it's not a reference architecture we're trying to match exactly. It's more of a, a spectrum that we're trying to see where we land upon and kind of like drive towards in this case, like being more cloud native. And so the goal of this working group is to help people understand where they are on that spectrum and what would be the benefits of becoming like more cloud native. And so I think we might want to move a little bit away from saying we're um, talking about conformance specifically, because I know it's quite a loaded term in the telco industry and maybe move more towards talking about like best practices. Hey, Bill. Yeah, I would very much agree with that statement. Best practices is, is definitely a key here, I think. Yeah, great. So maybe um, as like an action point, I had like before the next meeting, um, I could kind of go through what we have so far and kind of like update some of the documentation to make sure that we're talking about like best practices rather than um, conformance, unless anybody else wants to raise their hand and say like, this is something that they want to work on. On that, we, we have updated a lot of the existing docs to no longer talk about requirements. 
So that would be a related thing to conformance. So it's unlike um, some tests that are just going to be pass fail. This one, you're you're really looking at that spectrum that Bill's talking about. So any type of phrasing or wording that you see that looks like you're locked in versus it's just helping you to know how well you're doing. Um, and I think this would tie into something um, Gerge had talked about in Slack too, and maybe uh, Daniel as well. Um, if you're looking at requirements for yourself as a service provider and saying, we need to have some type of integration or performance or something else and there's a gap or some capability that's not there on a Kubernetes um, based deployment, then by all means, you're saying this part of the solution is not going to be as cloud native, that's fine. It's, that's not the point. The point would be on the parts that, that you are there and for whatever you're trying to gain that you can assess that. Where it falls short, then you're going to use other measurements. So this, this won't be um, what we're coming up with. These best practices, you could think of them as maybe more a la carte. You're going to go through and someone may go, say, we're doing great on security for how you're going to handle security on a Kubernetes-based platform, but we need to do something else here if we want to uh, take advantage of the benefits. And then something else you may say, we need to not do this at all because of our needs. Yeah, so I think that may be kind of like a, a good um, like transition into how we're thinking about like structuring the work right now so that people can understand that it's kind of more a la carte. Um, and so the process for defining, I guess it's not requirement, best practices. Um, and so Taylor, have I, Taylor and I have created like a, a template um, similar to the Kubernetes enhancement proposal, the cap process used in Kubernetes, um, which is similar to the process used in uh, Rust and Python too. Um, and I guess as we <laughs> as we found out, uh, the the hardest thing in uh, computer science is always naming. So I think Taylor, maybe the first thing that we need to do uh, based off this discussion is actually maybe rename uh, the templates because it's not specifically conformance that we're talking about, but um, best practices. Um, now, if anybody has a better name here, uh, Taylor and I tried to come up with a, a name, um, but didn't have an idea. And so we wanna create kind of like a template to help structure the work um, and the discussion here um, that we're doing. And so I think Taylor, one of the things that we need to do is uh, remove conformance from this and maybe move it to like best practice. So if anybody's familiar with the work um, in, in Kubernetes, a, a lot of it now is structured through Kubernetes enhancements. And it's kind of a, a template to structure like what we're going to be talking about. And this is kind of how we see people um, like working um, in this work group to, to propose like cloud native best practices that they think should be followed. Um, and so similar to that, there's um, kind of a release sign off checklist. Um, summary, motivation, goals, non-goals, the actual proposal with user stories, uh, notes, reference constraints, uh, references, alternatives, the testing plan, the scoring, and the implementation history. And so um, I'll dive kind of into like each of these uh, more specifically, but if anybody has any questions or feedback or comments about this process, this is kind of like our first um, like idea of how we should do it. So it, it's still, I, I think like a little bit work in progress to be great to have feedback um, uh, of what people are thinking too. Can I ask a couple questions real quick yeah. before we dive in? I'm kind of confused now because it seems like the scope of this has shifted over the weekend. Um, so like a couple things, if we're not doing requirements, then what makes our best practices any more than just our opinions written down on paper like how, what is the determining factor to say that this is a good practice that you should be doing? Um, B2, 
if we're just now doing a collection of best practices, how is that any different than, you know, Amazon or Google's cloud native best practices that I can look up right now? Um, like, how is this going to be relevant to CNFs? What are we going to focus on to say, this is how you should incorporate network functions in a cloud native way? Like, I'm kind of worried that we're starting to water things down because people get offended when you use words like conformance and they might not be conformant, but um, you know, we have like 5,000 reference architectures floating around and people forget that the first word is reference. So I can go and reference something and do an architecture off of it, but it's probably not gonna be the same. So how do I apply best practices to CNTT's RA2? You know, how do I know that this best practice actually maps to a requirement somewhere and I should be doing it in the first place? Uh, I, I'll second that. Um, I, I have, I, I sort of, my hackles went up a little bit when I heard the term best practices. Um, because that is a very, very squishy thing. Um, and I think that perhaps what's getting a little bit lost here is that um, we're starting from the point of view of we can do things um, rather than thinking perhaps more in terms of the thing that we want to ultimately do and what we need in order to get there. So, um, and I think that there are lots of different answers to that second question. Different people have different answers. And it might be worthwhile collecting those with some specificity as to what people are actually trying to achieve, what problems they're trying to solve um, by participating in this group. And that will allow us then to figure out what it is exactly it is that, that our, our group is about. So um, we've gone back and forth on having hard requirements and that could go whether you have um, some type of scoring system that doesn't that does pass fail or you could still have a gradient but these are hard requirements and we're expecting everyone to follow them. I think in the end and whatever you put, if, if someone says it's not valuable, they're not going to do it. So if you look more at, I guess, what CNCF does in general um, with options, it gives you a lot of options. The landscape is to help you go in and find different things for categories that you may need. So it's, it's I wouldn't say that the point with this is to throw out every best practice about any applications running. So if, if, if we um, relook at this, the idea was if you're going to run networking or a telecom specific applications, how would you take those and then run them on a Kubernetes based platform and, get, and um, make it as efficient as possible, leveraging um, capabilities and Kubernetes and everything else. So for that you really need to look at specific applications. What are real um, real world applications, can, and then can, talk about their features and how you may best run those. Uh, can we just not have a you in that sentence? Which is the you that cares that a CNF is you know running properly, assuming that it's uh, a bunch of microservices with a mutable infrastructure. Who cares most about that? Because I don't see how that matters terribly much to a service provider who's buying an application from somebody else that it's made from a bunch of microservices. If it's made from a bunch of microservices or not, if it delivers the service and it's maintainable and it's operable and so on and so forth, then we're good. Um, but there are a lot of questions about actually can it deliver that service today? Um, and what is that service? And is there any framework about what it looks like? Those are best practices that I think could be very valuable. But I, I'm concerned that if we skip past that level of requirements, the level of requirements that actually matter, that it's doing a job that we all recognize, and we jump to, it doesn't matter whether or not it does anything useful, it just matters that it runs as a bunch of microservices, then we, we've, we've like a lot of projects at the moment, we've basically just uh, pretended that we all understand what the requirements are and skip straight to design again. 
I guess, I guess the difficulty with that would be is, you know, how, how do we determine that it's useful? And, and so rather than using we, you, I'll use we. So, so how, does, how does anybody determine it's useful? It's, well, it's completely subjective based on the environment that it's going to go in. I right think there's the a couple of things you know, yeah, that that's, aren't that's subjective, though, like uptime. If we do something well, that reduces yes. uptime, it should be nixed. Uh, I, you know, I mean, there, there are some core things that I don't think a single one of us would dispute as a core requirement. And I see some really fancy technology that comes out from here and there, and it'll like fundamentally violate one of these core requirements for just networking in general, like junior, you know, network plus type stuff. Um, and those questions never get asked of, you know, okay, I did all of this, but now my network is way less stable than it was before. Should I have done this? Should, I, I could give you, be, um, well, I say better examples, different examples, right? Um, one is that we are looking for a CNF that can do, at least in many cases, fast networking. In other cases, if you like, clean networking, weirder networking that Kubernetes is familiar with. So a requirement of a CNF is that it uses a set of interfaces that it would expect to find in the platform to deliver those that functionality. Um, and without documenting what that kind of functionality is, we aren't going to get those interfaces. That's one example. Um, we expect, I, I think everybody would agree with me, that CNFs are mostly provided by vendors um, and that run on a platform that isn't provided by the vendor. Um, so some sort of understanding between vendor and platform would be necessary for that to work. We expect that a CNF is deployable. Now, the application deployment stuff that I've seen in the community largely assumes that Kubernetes is actually a part of the application, but that's not the model we're trying to follow here. So what a deployable application is, what an application is, and certainly what a CNF is, not well defined in this particular environment. Um, and I, I said this on the channel, and I'll say it again, that there's more than one audience here. We tend to focus on the telco itself as the only people that matter here, but they're just one of about four audiences that you can reasonably consider while deciding what a CNF is and what it's good for. Because, yeah, we need to make it so that they can operate it and that it effectively builds a, be it a mobile or a cable or whatever network for them. But on the other hand, we also need to make sure that an application team independent of that telco, because this is not quite the DevOps environment we're thinking of, can be supportable, that the platform can't be broken. These things, right, different audiences need different things and they all need to be satisfied for a successful system. I would agree with what you're saying. I think, as always, the devil's in the details, isn't it? Yep. I mean, what certainly what we've found from doing doing integration, and I'll, I'll, I'll not name any vendors, um, is, you know, the less complex the application, you know, sort of as you head from web service down to complex network function, is the more complex they get, the more integration work is required. And it's required at all the various levels, all the way down to, to the hardware, right down to, we've found everything from, you know, microcode to BIOSes to all sorts of things that need tweaking. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, I think that's, that's the challenge really, is where, where do we draw the line in terms of saying, okay, we're, we're not gonna be able to be completely prescriptive about types of hardware or, in exactly how it's going to be configured because we'll never have all the hardware in the world to test um and we're never going to be able to go and do a we, do, we can't have any more layers of abstraction in my opinion i mean the whole point of kubernetes and others was it's a layer of abstraction anyway we don't want to go to lowest common denominator in terms of abstraction so it it's difficult to know where to draw the line i mean one of the things i was considering was if it's as this is an inclusive group is it is in a vendor and a platform's best interest to to contribute how one would normally configure something now you know whether whether any particular vendor that sits on top of this is is happy with that secret source being known is is the discussion we'll have to have another time but um you know i think that that's one way to do it is make this a group where references are provided as well as we have a framework in which we can receive them but and my, my last point then i'll shut up is um you know, one of the difficulties is CNI. You know, we, I don't believe we should prescribe a CNI. I mean, there are going to be many and they're probably going to be more um, and they serve different purposes. So that, that does complicate things as well. Um, that, that last point, I think, um, perhaps the problem you might argue with the CNI is that we, we've never 
um, and I'll take the CNTT as an example and therefore probably make a lot of enemies in the process, but you know, the CNTT is busy, busy defining a lot of ways in which you would put a reference architecture together, but I don't think it's ever defined what that architecture actually needs to accomplish. Um, you know, the requirements came in basically by seeing what OpenStack did and listing them as requirements rather than by saying, what does a CNF need to do? Why don't we ask some CNF designers what it needs to do and listing the requirements? I think you'll get a different answer from whomever you'd ask. And I think- Yeah, therefore... on the other hand, I don't think you'll get anywhere until you ask. So, you know, they're, they're the people that care about this stuff, to be perfectly honest. They're the ones that need to produce working product if it's a vendor environment. Um, you know, the, the application designer is an audience here. Yes, I would agree. Uh, one, one aspect that I, I was in the beginning throwing this best practices or, or reference architecture uh, uh, in the in the room, but uh, I really uh, have a same sentiment regarding the, the reference architectures and this kind of standardization uh, uh, work on, on paper because it's never going to, to cover all the use cases. Uh, what I meant actually is um, uh, I, I'm fully subscribing uh, to that idea of a um, certain level of, of conformance testing of the hard, let's say, facts that could be uh, created against some definition, because it's something to uh, that will drive potentially the the, the change in the uh, in the environment. So what we are facing, uh, and I can also bring a concrete examples, uh, and maybe we can start with the. Uh, pain points, uh, identification, addressing the, uh, the the concrete use cases. So we are, uh, as, as a company, we build our own platform based on the upstream. So we don't get a vendor uh, to build the, the Kubernetes-based platform. So we essentially manage Kubernetes internally using upstream and the ecosystems around it. Uh, and we face, I mentioned that in the, in the first session, uh, we face the issue that when uh, an uh, application vendor comes to us, uh, like, uh, for example, uh, 5G packet core, uh, whatever uh, vendor you take, they have a specific certifications with some commercial uh, platforms, let's say, on based on the partnerships, but nobody has covering everything. Um, and then we are in the, in the position, okay, how do we prove that uh, our Kubernetes is really... Uh, capable of uh, running uh, that application. It should be vice versa. That application uh, should actually have a conformance test to confirm that it can run in a, in a generically enough Kubernetes. And this is what I meant about uh, can we set a set of uh, or can we think of set of um, uh, uh, assumptions, blue, uh, uh, even derive them from the best practices uh, to actually uh, make this cloud native network function definition. So what cloud native function uh, uh, can do and what it cannot do if it claims to be a cloud native. One example, and uh, I think it's not for this session, but for, uh, for uh, further work. One example is uh, this networking approach. It's a one-to-one -one copied from the virtualized world. Uh, the network function skips normally, like this big network function, skips normally entire Kubernetes networking for whatever, uh, and goes out through this multi-nic uh, setup. Is this a, a practice that we want to follow, or we uh, um, want to uh, advocate more for a like? Let's use the Kubernetes networking for that, and let's make it say usable, adapted, and so on. So many other things, also kernel parameters, BIOS, and all stuff that, that could be taken into account as a part of current practice and then qualified as a pattern on RT pattern, um, something like that. So yeah, I, 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 would just, that's why I, would just I like your conformance very much. I, I agree, but I would just say that each one of those things serves a purpose and the purpose that it's serving Again, largely, there, there are, I say, two purposes here, actually. What well, one is, does it allow the CNF to run? Um, can we bring this down to a checklist of items that, that the CNF consumes it this way, that the platform provides it this way? Because there's a contract between CNF and platform of this is the level of behavior I'm looking for from the platform for this CNF to provide the SLA that it's offering. Um, the other one is um, where... Uh, you come into this, which is as a network architect, you want to be able to link your CNF to the wider network. And that being the case, then the, there's a separate and independent set of problems that says, does the networking that we have allow you to properly wire this into the external network? Because again, um, you know, Kubernetes 
and, and I'm not going to judge Multis and things here, but the CNI definition as Kubernetes has it, assumes there's a single point of egress for, for packets from the cloud. And that is clearly not what we're trying to accomplish if we're trying to do complex wiring of, of network function level traffic into the world. So I, I want to zoom in on Yeah, this. but I, I would touch that. I would touch that as well, uh, mm -hmm. because why, uh, I mean, we, with a complex environment, a networking environment, that's definitely uh, one part of the, of the blame is on the operators who grown that and then who are uh, running that in, in a production. Uh, but uh, uh, it's something also to, to be revised in the cloud native uh, way. Is that actually the best, uh, best pattern to follow? Or is it maybe like, is there a, a better pattern to follow like recommendation uh, um, that comes out of group or uh, whatever gremium? And there are some uh, current practices which are maybe not uh, uh, so good pattern to follow. This is what I'm interested in, if we can induce some some uh, change into how we produce the things beyond just I, Kubernetes itself. I, I think I think that I'm, I can understand where you're coming from, I think, but I mean, my background is in networking, okay, so just to be transparent, um, is, you know, the, the difficulty with the networking piece is if we try to to, to, I think if we try to make a conformance for more simplistic networking, for example, in, in Kubernetes, and obviously there's good reasons for wanting to do that because it's easier, um, you know, and, and probably is less less problematic for everything from coding to troubleshooting. The, the, the real problem is that as Kube, I think is that as Kubernetes is becoming infrastructure in that sense, if you look at how it's going to get deployed for RAN, for example, it's essentially a networking infrastructure and it's a platform infrastructure, it's an orchestrator, it's, it's, it's many things. The difficulty is that networking goes back 20, 30 years and a lot of this stuff is set up in that way for, for really good reasons. So you'd actually have to go back to, to the whole networking piece that has nothing to do with Kubernetes and start trying to change that. Now, I'm not, I'm not suggesting everything should stay the same forever, but that's that that is a very big place to start and a lot of these applications have multiple interfaces for, for for many many reasons i mean yeah tunneling and everything could be made a lot more straightforward and there are things we could do in that area actually for service providers and others to make things more telco friendly um with actually less protocols frankly on the networking side but that doesn't fit all telcos either not all of them would want to run the particular protocols i'm thinking of and not all of them do and, and, and ever will and have a religious objection to pretty much. So I think this is where the networking piece is complex because people, you know, their networks are different for many, many reasons. And, and it's, I, I, I've got to be honest, as someone who worked at the IETF quite a lot, I don't see we're ever going to harmonize that um, from a Kubernetes point of view. So I, I want to zoom in a little bit here um, and underscore this point. Um, we're, we're kind of dancing around it and I think it's a big one. Uh, we all know that vanilla Kubernetes is insufficient, right? Um, the difference between the vanilla Kubernetes and the, the actual Kubernetes distributions that could be used for CNFs is big. Uh, it's, it's exactly that gap that has to do with networking. And not only that, there are other things having to do with orchestration and multi-cluster. I know some of you are part of the multi-cluster SIG. There's a lot of work going on there and there are a lot of different solutions to that as well. Um, we, so here's the thing, you know, if, if there's going to be a best practice that says, well, uh, some of us are encouraging, for example, the use of Multis that was, that was discussed here is this is a practical good solution for a CNF. Now, if somebody's creating a CNF and the platform does not have good support for Multis, then there's a huge gap there already. And as some, as you, some of you know, even Multis is insufficient, right? I, I was just going to say, maybe the point here is not whether Multis is sufficient or not, but what your scoring system is. What do you mean by scoring? What makes it sufficient? Oh, OK. Um, <laughs> so, so you know, it, it, it does the job in terms of that, that it allows you to connect to exactly, as Andrew said, these networks that already exist as, as, as other networks in the operating system level, right? It does, it does that job. Um, if I'm a CNF builder, as opposed to a network architect, does it do that job? And actually, when it comes to connecting to the network, I would personally debate that it does that job as sure, well yeah. as it could. You know but, what? I, yeah. I, I, absolutely. I think that things going on in, in the network uh, service mesh group are, are also a very good critique. The point is, you know, if, if we as a CNF work group 
are talking about best practices. Is using Multis a best practice or not? You know, here we're moving beyond vanilla Kubernetes and maybe, maybe we have to to an extent because this is where I think uh, uh, a CN somebody who's building a CNF will need some help. You know, what, mm. what can they do and what can they target? And if they target multiple technologies, you know, that, that's where we get into the conformance thing, right? Is this work mm. group going to uh, say that the best practice, for example, is to use Multis and what would be that, the implications of that? And yeah. this connects a little bit. I, I know uh, in, in an earlier uh, Telco user group meeting, I've talked about creating another work group having to do with Multis part two to kind of fix some of the orchestration issues having to do with Multis. We're yeah, just- my my initial question, though, like comes up, you say that like Multis is sufficient, but like, what are we basing sufficiency on? <clears throat> I'm just going to keep hammering the requirements yeah, thing I, out. I, and you guys can tell me to shut up, question. but like, yeah. but like, I don't like in the CNT reference architecture, one of the debates we had early on was, you know, they put a requirement down that says I need a CNI multiplexer. Well, is that a requirement or is that an implementation slash solution to meet an actual, you know, functional or non-functional requirement of multiple interfaces or packet treatment or whatever, right? Like, how, like I said, even if all we do is prescribe best practices, what are we judging the quote unquote best part on to like define that? So well, I and, and, and that's the- Right now, right? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep it high level. It was just uh, an example, but, but this is the you kind could, of scope that we I, need to discuss, right? I could, this is, this is Sukhdev from Jodhpur. I, I could try to interject as to what is the best practice. Like for instance, a simplification of the configuration could be one one characteristics of the best practice. In in, in order for a, for a CNF to connect to multiple networks, using Multis can be a very complex uh, configuration. Okay, so now that the, the the key is a CNF needs to connect to multiple networks. So take 5G uh, deployment, 5G RAN deployment. When you're running a, a DU functionality or a UPF functionality, it needs to connect to uh, G node B, it needs to connect to AMF function, it needs to connect to SMF function. These are all CNFs or, or, or Kubernetes applications running at different parts of the cloud, right? So the requirement is these guys need to be able to communicate. They need to be able to discover each other. They need to be able to uh, connect with each other. Now, trying to bring in and saying, oh, Multis is the best practice. Why is it a best practice? It's not, it's, it's, it could be a fairly complex thing to, to manage that or, or even to configure that. So, so why even go there as a part of the best practice to say use Multis or Denim or, or whatever practices? Why, why not just stop it there and say the, the platform must provide an ability for a CNF to be able to connects to multiple networks and stop there and, I, and, and 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 in terms of in terms of the best practices you simply state that it should be very simple to uh, configure and it should be automatable so you, so that you can automate it so otherwise plumbing all these pieces is a pain in the neck even if you use multis or use any other multiplexers don't even why even go to the multiplexers why multiplexers Right. So, so if a single I, mean, it, it, I, I, I agree. This is kind of what I was alluding to before is that, you know, as it's a sort of a plug in architecture on one level is the people who provide these technologies. So let's, you know, we're talking about Multis. So let's say Multis is, you know, a, a sort of a, I don't want to say reference implementation, but a best practice implementation from the point of view of Multis to cope with here's the, here's the type of configuration we, we, we recommend uh, in the following use cases. I mean, that, that's that's kind of what I was alluding to before is taking I, I agree with you it's like taking it from the application point of view where do you stop it's like well you kind of stop at the applications integration at some point and if people have methods of doing multiple interfaces or you know whatever else you want to do with it then then people can contribute this is best practice for that particular technology because there's there's going to be more of these no, but 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 I, so, I mean, if I can just and, oh, if ahead. I can just pause pause the conversation for a minute here. I, I know we've heard a lot from the vendors, and I, I want to thank all of you for your perspective. I just want to actually turn it over. I know we have quite a few service providers um, on the call too, so I, I'd like to hear from them too. So, 
Uh, I know we have Deutsche Telekom, um, Swisscom, uh, Bell Canada, uh, Charter. Sorry if I'm missing anybody, but does anybody from one of the service providers, I know we've had quite a few different conversations, uh, want to speak up and provide their input too? Yeah, I can. This is Ruben from Swisscom speaking. Um, so I'm, I'm fairly new to that group. So, so bear with me, please. Um, I was just listening the the thing on, on, on requirements or my view is that conformance without having a shared understanding of what are the assumptions is really difficult, at, at least for me, right? Um, and, and this is this would be one thing, right? Um, without necessarily going into uh, the details, if the design space is infinite because anybody can do whatever he wants, that's going to be very, very difficult. Um, so I hope I could express myself properly here, but for, for me, this would be one input, right? I mean, right now with conformance, I would not even know where to start. Um, I would not even know where to prioritize the design space. Does that make sense? Or do I need to try it differently? It made sense to me. And then the other thing I, I can say, I mean, um, I think there was this debate about requirement or, or, or how precise we want to be. Um, I think at the current time, when I see the status of the technology and how fast it might be moving, I'm not sure whether we can, I'm just not sure how much we can look into the crystal ball and really make very, very strong requirement, right? But as I said, at least from my point of view, at least trying to restrict the design space would be useful or, or at least giving good, you know, good directions. <laughs> That, that that that's all that would have for the moment. <laughs> Thanks. And so, if you're saying if we could restrict the design space, I guess like what would be helpful to you as an operator? Um, if I at least, <clears throat> so my two cents. If I come back on the on the whole networking part, or I would say the the more. Um, I mean, we have this discussion around vanilla Kubernetes not being enough, right? I mean, here at least we could try to make it a bit more, I think we should try to make it a bit more, a bit more precise, right? Um, because again, this is, it, it's true, everybody understands that, uh, but there are so many ways to solve it, right? Now, uh, that might be clear for all of you, and, and it's maybe just me not knowing the, the overall landscape enough, uh, that could be, um, but that, that could be a place to start, right? Yeah. Does uh, anybody else want to uh, speak to that point? Uh, more generally, I would say um, an effort to map um, terminology and language to what you're going to find in Kubernetes. And right now, I'm going to keep leaning into Kubernetes instead of general cloud native. It's fine to do this, and we want the principles. Um, when we talk about something we can actually measure, we'll have to get more precise and talk about each implementation. So starting with Kubernetes. So if, if we take language in the telco space and try to map it. So one of the examples would be, what is a Kubernetes uh, workload? Well, there's actually um, definitions around that and then you can map those out and say, well, how does this relate to a telco worker and NS? So you could talk about the um, a network function and say, well, then what would that be as a something running on Kubernetes and, and start looking at, at how that ties in. So then you can actually get down to a specific application, say this telco application, which would be a Kubernetes workload could be deployed in these many different ways. So what are the best practices on those things? And then it has various features that it already potentially already exists because it's already been implemented. So how would you harness those or use those? They may tie into using CNIs or maybe or some other networking or maybe it's totally different features like storage. 
How are you storing your data? Is, are you handling data on Kubernetes in a way that it can help you do recovery and, and everything else? Or is Kubernetes gonna get in your way because you were, you've implemented handling state in a way that you're gonna fight Kubernetes, you know? So I think there's, once you look at a specific application, you can actually break it down and there are existing best practices and maybe multiple choices on, on each feature. And probably starting with the ones that um, a real application and breaking down the features and actually seeing re rather than say, let's, let's pick one particular thing that has a gap on Kubernetes and figure that out. Let's start looking at best practices um, of a real application and, and see what comes out. I'm also adding, I, I know there's quite a bit going on in the chat too, um, <laughs> in terms of conversations. Thanks for everybody um, that's adding there. Uh, like one of the points um, is, that NFV didn't work out um, somewhere between working, working out very well. Some people call it failing. Um, like our goal is to help, how can we make this transition better? And that's what this working group is trying to figure out. And so what are the outcomes we're, we're trying to have? Um, are there any other operators that would like to kind of provide their input or opinion on where, where we should go? Yeah, so I will, Bill. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Dan from Bell. So I've been vocal around the fact that uh, I don't think like a reference architecture that everybody's going to be applying to will work. I think there's too many fluidity in that ecosystem to think that you're going to be able to align on a single platform and everybody agrees on it. I do agree with Ian's uh, comment around the contracts. I think that's the I think that's the one we need to look at more. Finding ways to abstract as much as possible the CNF requirements from the platform. This way you're able to deconnect it, decompose it differently, and you can have like fluidity in that space as well. Um, aside from that, you have to think from an operator perspective, cloud native is not that we just want to have a package CNF or a package container workload, is we want to be able to leverage the capabilities of the, that the cloud can offer us to do those services. So rather than have, for example, complex control and sync mechanisms between functions, can we leverage Gremlin capabilities? Can we leverage any CAS services or capabilities as we see in cloud to offer some of our workloads rather than having complex orchestration systems to tie those together? Those are the benefits we wanna get out of this. And I've been vocal about the fact that I would like that working group to help us find new use cases or new ways of building functions in a network that doesn't become like a big clutch, big fat container with six interfaces because we don't know how to integrate them together and make them like a more integrated into a simpler way. That's from our perspective, that's the way to go. Whether I end up with a vendor I end up with my own. If we're able to have that abstracted so that we can have that fluidity in the in the platform and be single way of doing it. And still now we have that same challenge. And if you try to get to perfection too fast in those kind of framework, it, uh, we, if we aim for perfection in that kind of in the same ecosystem for CNFs, well, we'll end up again eight years later not having a real like industry approved way of doing those functions and something else will have happened, like unique kernels or some new ways of doing things with ASICs. And the end will have the same results. I think um, the use cases and reasoning behind is all part of the proposals that at least the process that's there right now 
if someone says, here's a best practice that they think should be, or they're offering as a good thing to follow, then one of the things in the, those proposals is to say why. So you could talk about um, the capability to, it allows you to stitch these different pieces together and lowers maybe the efforts for the developers as well as um, the operation side, whether that's a collaboration between vendors that are helping to support or the service providers ops teams, that they know that the applications are um, following some best practice that they've already are familiar with, um, say Kubernetes feature that helps to um, provide some something for each of those applications that fit together. And then if, if you look at some of the comments in the chat about like ONAP and OSM and stuff, you could say a an application that's helping to provide maybe enhance enhancements or leveraging the, the capabilities of Kubernetes for um, some type of business view on the orchestration is likely to tie right into the monitoring and status and other capabilities of Kubernetes, but let Kubernetes do a lot of the, the legwork behind. So you're, you're not trying to force things a certain way, but just nudge and guide things in a certain direction. So I, I would say it's gonna be a tie in with the applications that are run well on Kubernetes and allow you to monitor um, use the status that they provide across the platform and then mainly let it be automated. So I think we have, um, I agree a bit, Taylor. I think we have a kind of a short-term problem and a long-term dream that we need to fix. So right now, most of the impl uh, implementations of CNS we see coming are kind of trying to grab the same things we were doing in VNF, the same capability, the same requirements, the same infrastructure requirements we have, and you need to ship them together. SRUV, NUMA pinning, all those things need to come up because that's the way we use from existing code. The VNF, the VNF vendors come from existing codes to what is gonna be happening right now in CNFs. What I'm looking at at some point is, well, is it required? So I understand that some protocols are missing in Kubernetes, so it not, was not built for some, some of them, that's okay. Multi-interface, do we need multi-interface? Right now we do because the code we get comes with it. But at some point, if I'm, I'm gonna build a CGNAT function in two years, do I still need multi-interface? One for management and something, and do I still need that? Or can we look beyond that? Because you don't think about this, but adding that multi-interface means you need to find different ways of doing network segmentation in your cluster, which is, oh, by the way, still not there. So you're, that's the, the, the trick that to get all those things working because we try to integrate them as they were in, CN, in VNFs. At the end, we're still eight years and it's still gonna be other, other things not working. And that's where I'm afraid of it. The time is gonna take to align on this over time rather than look at, okay, this is the ones we get for the next 18 months, but if somebody's building a new CNF in 2022, why can't you look at a different way of building it? And this is where I'm looking from the cloud communities, different ways of doing this and getting experience from that, that ecosystem to look at, hey, we can do it differently. And that's where I'm, I'm hoping from that effort will help out in. I don't know. We're almost, I, I guess I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, some of the, some, especially around the multi-interface piece, I, I wouldn't have any of us take this too lightly in terms of being able to change that. I mean, some some of the separations that are required by networks are regulatory. I mean, they're, they're not even in the purview of somebody who says, as a developer, I wish to do it a different way. I mean, you know, some of these problems with telco are profound. And I don't think that should be underestimated in terms of how we wish to design CNCFs or CNFs rather. It built, we're almost at the top of the hour. I just want to throw in one more proposed outcome from a provider. Um, and this is going to be way less sexy than a lot of the stuff that we're talking about, but we've been pushing Kate's out into our production network for like the last couple of years. And I think the vast majority of us on the provider side are probably people like me who work on like our development and office of the CTO side, but like engaging with operations, um, doing things at telco scale 
you know, without crazy things like NUMA pinning and SROV, but like, do I give every single CNF its own cluster? And at what point do I start having, you know, an almost equal amount of redundant master and etcd nodes that I do worker nodes? Um, how do I scale this at the edge? Um, how do I manage, you know, multi-tenancy, right? Like if I don't give every single one, and then this comes to Ian's point about, um, you know, a single egress, right? You, like the problem with these reference architectures, right, is it's looking at a single piece of a stack and then all of a sudden I go one layer out my network and I have this aggregate firewall and I open up one port on this firewall for a subnet that all of these, you know, things in a shared cluster are now piggybacking off each other. And there's just all these weird operational challenges, you know, for running, not like even the most basic network, like control plane function stuff and just regular web scale stuff like we don't tend to run like two to three enterprise applications. We run literally thousands of applications for lots of different people, video applications. And I'm really hoping one of the outcomes of this isn't just the sexy stuff of how do I get like a packet core to work efficiently in Kates, but like, how do I run like 5,000 clusters with like 5,000 different firewall rules, you know, in operations? Cool. Um, thank you for that. Um, uh, I appreciate everyone's discussion. I, I think it's been just as lively uh, as the kickoff meeting. I think it's great that there's so many different opinions. Um, I know not everybody can make this meeting, so it'd also be great uh, to move some of this discussion to GitHub. So if you have an idea or if there's some place you'd want this group to go, I'd encourage you strongly to create um, a PR against the repo and then we can also have the discussion there. And I think both the at the meetings and uh, online through GitHub, we can help kind of move this forward. So um, with that, I really appreciate um, the discussion for today and I, I hope you will uh, continue to contribute to this group. Thanks for joining today. Thank you, Bill.